Hello and welcome to this masterclass on a topic that I didn't think that I'd be delivering six months ago, a year ago, the year before that, and that is TikTok for B2B. Indeed, if you go onto the interwebs, if you go onto the internet and go into YouTube, you might even, if you search TikTok for business, find a video of me saying, don't bother with TikTok. It is a complete waste of time. However, times they are a changing and TikTok is indeed aging up, which is why we are tackling this topic today. So I'm going to kick things off with a starter question for you. Here is my starter question. Are you already on TikTok? That's what I want to hear from you. And all you need to do is give me an acronym, a yes, as in a why. Yes, I'm doing it for fun. Just trying to turn my heater down. Why B, yes, I'm doing it for my business. No, not on it. Not on TikTok at all, but people keep talking about it. So I thought I'd better turn up and figure out whether it's worth my time and attention. Now, let's have a look at some of your answers. Uh, we've got a no and then a yes. Rachel's got a YB. Uh, then I see a yes. Amy's got a YB. David's got a no. Then we've got a yes, no, Y and YB. So Judd's doing it for fun and he's also doing it for his business. Uh, Chris is doing it for fun. I got a no and a no. All right, well, it's an interesting group of people. So what I wanna to do today is I wanna be delivering this training in a way that if you are not on TikTok or if you are just using it for fun, you can make an informed decision about whether this is worth your time and attention. If you are all you already using it for your business, I hope that I can help you accelerate your commercial goals. All right, here's my next question for you. If you have not tried it so far, or if you have not started using it for your business, why? All right, and if you have started using it for your business, what's the hardest bit? If you have not tried it so far, why have you not tried it so far? If you have, what's the hardest bit? And I want you to use the chat tool. This is a little bit harder than answering a, a why or, or a why B or a no, because I want you to be thinking about your motivations. Um, these are head scratches. And we also always need to be asking ourselves these types of questions because these are self-assessments. So Jade said, I'm camera shy, which is a fantastic first comment. I'm camera shy. Thank you so much. Andrew says, it just seems like another SMM distraction and a big black hole. Yes, exactly how I have felt uh, for most of the time that TikTok has been part of our world. Uh, Nobby says, I can't twerk. I, I can't either, but I have tried. Not on TikTok though, uh, just around the house. You know how it is. Uh, seems pretty lightweight. Yeah, says, uh, says Graham. Uh, I'm self-conscious, says Danny. Thank you so much. Uh, is it relevant for my target audience, says Veronica? That was my biggest hesitation. And if you look at the video that I posted on YouTube about two years ago, that was the main bit. And it was just my target audience that not on it. And um, the people that are on it are too young to be investing in themselves and their businesses. However, if you're now looking at the stats, the age bracket is shifting. It's pretty much on par with, uh, with Facebook by now. And I've seen different conflicting, uh, different, different conflicting stats, but I found one uh, set of statistics that actually said that TikTok users are more affluent than Facebook users overall. Uh, Judd says the hardest thing, creating, a, creating content that appears that it fits the medium and is entertaining and is in short bursts. Uh, I think that the moment that you can start producing content in short bursts, it reframes things, it flips things. At least that there was a big eye-opener, a big game changer for me. Keep your comments coming because when you participate, not only will you be getting a whole lot of value because when you participate, you reinforce the lesson in your own head. You're more likely to take action. When you take action, that creates momentum. Momentum creates more momentum. And then you get outcomes. Not only when you leave a comment, will you be helping other people on the call? Have you thought about this? When you say, I'm self-conscious about how I, how I appear on camera, like Danny so generously said, other people might not be willing to say that. 
but you say it and then they suddenly go, man, I am not alone, right? I am not alone. So participate because it's going to help you. It's going to help others. Plus, we always have participation bonuses. And in this particular instance, we've got a document called 24 Lead Generation Tactics specifically for B2B. And if you would like this particular document, all you need to do is participate. So if you haven't participated yet, thank you, Pippa. Thank you, Rod. If you have not participated yet, thank you, David. Please do so now. Just say, hi, howdy, rock on. If you type anything, you will unlock this bonus. If you do not type anything, no bonus for you. All right. I'm going to be like the soup Nazi from, from, <laughs> from Seinfeld. All right. You play along, you participate. I reward you. If you kick back with your tub of popcorn and treat this as a passive exercise, like you're watching an episode of The Bachelorette, you get what you deserve. And that is nothing. Sarah just said, great. Dino says, hi, everyone. <laughs> Woohoo. Keith is also good for the bonuses. All right. So I asked you what was the hardest bit. And it's really important that we're aware of the obstacles or the roadblocks that are slowing us down. And doing a bit of soul searching myself and having a conversation, a bunch of conversations with a bunch of different people, um, I came up with three that I think are the three biggest head scratches. And not so coincidentally, they are also three big head scratches that can be applied to just about any form of social media or any new initiative designed to boost your authority, your profile, and generate leads. Number one, how much time is this going to take? I'm fearful that it's going to take way too much time. I know these social, plat social media platforms can be an outrageously big time suck, and I'm already addicted to my phone, and I don't want to spend the last five minutes of my night before I go to sleep tapping messages in my phone or when I wake up in the morning tapping messages in my phone. Is that you? Are you terrified that this could be a big time suck? That was my biggest fear. That was my biggest fear. Um, but however, there is good news. And that is not only by rolling out my own content rhythm, not only did I reduce my time on TikTok, I actually reduced my time across all the social media platforms. How good is that? And I'm going to come back to that in just a moment. The second... Biggest roadblock, um, head scratcher, is why wow, I need to do videos. And I saw at least two or three people say, yeah, you know, <laughs> I'm not quite sure I'm into doing videos. You know, I've got a face for radio. <laughs> it's something that I once said uh, many moons ago. Um, why wow, I need to do videos. Now, this all comes down to self-doubt. I firmly believe that everyone on this call can and should do videos. I really do. Uh, if someone can give me a valid exception to that, please call out and reframe my thinking. But here's the crazy thing. If you're working in the B2B space, if you're selling a complex product or service and you're working in an industry where it's more likely than not that you are working with individuals face-to-face -face or over the phone or, or via Zoom, sooner or later, there's going to be this moment where <laughs> you're going to have to introduce yourself as a human being. And if you're introducing yourself as a human being, wouldn't it be better for you and easier for you to start that process a lot earlier? Here's the thing. You don't want to build a funnel, get people into your funnel. They go through all these steps. They download your lead. They read your emails. They book a call. You have the call. You jump on the Zoom. And then suddenly there's this immediate disconnect. And the reality is, is that some people or types of people just don't get along. Do you know what I prefer? I much prefer when I jump on the phone or a Zoom call and the person feels like they know me. And there isn't this personality shock or I don't have to do a little bit of a tap dance to you know, get someone's approval. When it comes to this idea of doing videos, uh, it all really does come down to self-doubt. Now, fortunately, I have been doing videos for years, but I do remember in the early days how nervous and uncomfortable it made me feel. And I came up with my own little format, and that is I would walk around the block and shoot a video. And the reality is, is if I didn't like it, I could delete it. And if I liked it, I would use it. And then I progressively became more comfortable 
with that. Yes, guys and girls, we all suffer from imposter syndrome at some time, including me. If you've never suffered from imposter syndrome, it is either that you're not pushing yourself hard enough or you're a complete sociopathic narcissist. Ah! ah! All right, number two, how much time will it take? I don't want it to be taking over my life. Number one, I don't want it to be taking over my life. Number two, uh, I'm a little bit concerned about this idea of putting myself on video. Number three, if I am going to invest time in this thing, if I am going to force myself to do uncomfortable things, like overcome a little bit of self-doubt and imposter syndrome, will this actually be worth it? How will I actually make money? And I got to tell you, there are people out there. And when every time every new social media platform gets launched, there are people out there immediately saying, here's how to get to six figures. Here's how to get to seven figures. Here's how I became rich and famous using this particular platform. The reality, however, is that most people are teaching you how to build engagement, build followers, do all this other stuff. But at the end of the day, will it actually help you make money? And that is an important question that you need to be asking. And of course, I want to help you try to answer that question today. So I asked you for the head scratches. I asked you for the difficult bits, the hardest parts, the bottlenecks. I want you to inverse this stuff. I want you to imagine a world where creating content was easy and seamless and didn't feel like a time suck. I want you to imagine a world where you weren't constantly checking in on social media, first thing in the morning, last thing at night, or letting it take over your life. I want you to imagine a world where you are brimming with confidence, where you have no problem at all jumping on a phone, jumping on a sales call, jumping on a TikTok video. These are all related. These are all related. Speaking your mind and sharing your views and being the best version of yourself that you can be. How would it feel to know that you had some sort of consistent lead engine? Now, today we're going to be talking about TikTok, but as we talk about TikTok, I hope you observe that we're talking about a much bigger picture. And that there is amplification strategies generally, social media as a whole, and your business as a lead generator at the top of the funnel. How would it feel if you had systems in place that were naturally, organically generating leads, likes, authority, meetings, clients on autopilot, how would that feel? And I want to hear from you guys and girls. I want to hear a word, one or two words. That's all I want to hear from you, one or two words. Now, incidentally, if you're leaving a comment like Keith just did and David just did for hosts and panelists, only me and my helpers can see your comments. If you want to leave a message that everyone can see, use the drop down in the next to the two field and leave a message for everyone. All right. So for example, Keith said, your walking videos were really great, James. Thanks, Keith. David said, for me, videos are easy. My doubt is getting the videos, is getting the videos something that is TikTok interesting. Good feedback, David. Let's talk about that a little bit later. But for now, I want to know how would you feel? How would you feel if you were generating leads, authority, largely on autopilot. How would you feel if you're able to conquer those fears and come across as someone with enormous amounts of justifiable confidence? How would you feel if suddenly you looked back and you went, wow, I only spent this little bit amount of time this week on social media instead of this amount of time? Give me one word, two words. Uh, Kylie says, uh, feel, I would feel successful. That's awesome. Uh, that would be great, says Pippa. Cracker, says Marcus, who's just arrived as pumped, says Graham. Amazing, says Amy. These are all really good things. For me, here's what I want to give you. Uh, every week, we have a group mentoring call in our world that we run for our B2B Blazers, who are our private members, and people that have recently signed up for a training program like the Recipe or the Pointy End or 16 VIPs. And every week we have a group mentoring call where we cover marketing, sales, tech and scale. And then the fourth week we have an open day. And guys and gals, you're part of this open day right now where we host a masterclass, invite other people in and, uh, and address the bigger picture. But before we have these calls, we circulate an email with a little bit of a survey. And we ask a bunch of questions like, uh, 
Have you had any breakthroughs this week? Are you hitting any roadblocks? Are you stuck in any way? And not so long ago, a woman called Louise said, I finally feel like I have decision clarity. And I share this in most of my webinars these days. And that is because this was a powerful moment for me. I'm sure it was a powerful moment for Louise as well too. But out of all the things that I can give you, out of all the things that I can give you, I think that the most important thing that I can give you is decision clarity. So as I said, today we're talking about something called TikTok, which is one channel among many. Is it worth your time? Is it with, worth your, your effort and attention? And for some people, by the end of this, you're going to be saying, no, I don't think it is. But however, as I run through this, I want you to observe layers within the layers because I'm not just teaching about TikTok today. I'm talking about social media as a whole and lead generation. Indeed, this is the bigger picture. If you're in the B2B space, this is the holy grail. You need to be able to attract opportunities. Then you need to pre-qualify those opportunities. Then you need to book an appointment with those people. You need to elevate anticipation before that meeting so that they show up, they're all fired up. At that meeting, you need to do what you need to do to get them across the line. Demonstrate your value, your expertise, how you're the solution to the problems that they might have. And you might get a firm yes, and you take payment. You might get a tentative yes. You get a tentative yes, you got to do the follow-up, and then you need to close. At which point people think that this is the end of sales and marketing in B2B. No, it's not. Then you need to onboard. You need to get your people to a place called first win or first value, and that is when they are truly sold. This, of course, is a funnel. And we have the top of the funnel, the middle of the funnel and the bottom of the funnel. Tofu, mofu, and bofu. Take a photo, write that down. Today we're talking about tofu and a little bit of mofu, all right? Top of the funnel because when you're looking at something like TikTok, it's a way to attract opportunities, position you as an authority, which makes it a little bit easier at the middle of the funnel. Indeed, within our world, within the B2B school, we have something called our B2B growth engine. And we know that there are three levers, major levers that you can focus on to pull. One of them is the sales lever. One of them is the marketing lever. And one of them is the scale lever. Today, we're focused on marketing at the top of the funnel. Indeed, we're talking about an amplification strategy. And if you're already part of our world, what you'll find is that most of our amplification strategies can be found within our training program called The Recipe. Indeed, if you're already part of our world, you'll be pleased to know that over coming weeks, we've got some exciting things happening. Today, we're talking about TikTok. Next month for our open day, we're going to be talking about, what are we talking about? We're going to be talking about proposals, pricing, and self-closing offers. Proposals, pricing, and self closing offers. And the reason why we're doing that is that on this day, we're going to have a three-day event, three big half days. We're going to be focusing on intelligent offers, proposal, pricing, and intelligent offers. If you're already part of our world and you're interested in going deeper, I'm going to suggest that you go to b2b-.io. And there's a funny little message for you on our homepage right now. Cool. With that little bit of housekeeping out of the way, here is our agenda for today. What you see on the screen is my evergreen granny proof formula for social media. Now, when uh, Facebook appeared on the scene, we were among the first movers. We followed this particular formula and it paid off. Then it was the case with, tick, uh, with, then it was the case with Twitter. Then it was the case with LinkedIn. I kind of missed the uh, I missed the boat when it came to came to Instagram, uh, and uh, now of course we're talking about TikTok, and it's a granny proof formula because basically I can share it with my mum, who by virtue of the fact is a grandmother because I have children. Let me get this right: I have children. She is my mum, so by default she is a, she is a grandmother, and if she can get this, anyone can get it. It's a very simple formula. Maybe take a photo or write it down. Are you ready? Build, manage, monetize. 
On the bottom of the screen is Joe. Joe says, I've just experienced something I thought was never possible. A personal inquiry from a top CEO. LinkedIn is a game changer. I'm so grateful for your help. I'm finally feeling like I am the prize. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So the formula that I'm about to run through, we have used to teach and guide our clients for many years on just about every single social media platform. I chose this particular testimonial because Joe says, I am feeling like I am the prize. They came to me. It's, a, it's been a limited time since I have started to use TikTok, but I am already beginning to experience those experiences and anecdotally, I've already had a couple of people come to me and say, I've applied your strategies to my TikTok account. And that's the way it's working out for me. So here's what I want you to, here's what I want to hear from you right now. All I want you to do is I want you to type out four words. This is a piece of future pacing. If you say this, you're more likely to believe it. If you're more likely to believe it, you're more likely to take action around this concept. Are you ready? I want you to use the chat tool and I want you to write, I am the prize. That's it. I want you to write, I am the prize. Judd, straight off the, fat, off the bat, first to do it. Well done. I'm future pacing you here. There are so many voices going on in our head all the time telling you that I'm not worthy or I'm not this or I'm not that. I mean, like in the news at the moment, in my home country, Australia, we're about three weeks from it formally being announced that we might be entering a recession, right? And the newspapers are going to go crazy. They're going to go recession this, recession that. And all the fear language is going to come up and potential clients are going to try and use this as an opportunity to haggle and get discounts. And you're going to be second guessing what it is that you, that you need to do. You know, if you are the prize and you believe that you're the prize, you will see disruption and change as a massive opportunity. Because remember, if we're about to enter a recession, which means two, two uh, quarters of, I think it's stagnant or reverse economic growth, two quarters, and we're three weeks away from that being announced, it means that you've been living in a recession for the last six months. And it hasn't probably changed anything. So I'm setting you up for the future, all right? So please do it. I am the prize. I am the prize. Graham said it in capital letters. So has Fiona. <laughs> <laughs> Prize, I am, <laughs> says Yoda on the line. All right, rock and roll. Let's get into it. Build. Uh, it's obviously the most important first piece of the puzzle. Radical transparency. I am brand new to TikTok myself. I'm sure that there are people out there doing webinars and they've got training programs and they've got courses and they're saying, you know, I've got, you know, 100,000 followers and I'm making a million dollars a day. <laughs> right? That's not me at this point. I am a guy that started a real business 20 years ago. I started a print magazine made of paper and ink, and it looks like this, right? 20 years ago, I quit my day job. I moved home with my parents because I was, could do that in my 20s. Now I've got a wife and a couple of kids, a little bit more difficult. But I launched a national business magazine from my parents, from the spare bedroom of my parents' suburban home. It was my sister's old bedroom. I set up the office in her old bedroom with an ADSL connection. You remember when the internet was like taking payments by a fax with the love, heart, the love heart curtains and the wham posters on the wall. And that's how I started my business, a real business in the real world. And I grew that to become a market leader in my home country, Australia. I was, uh, it was best magazine launch of the year when it launched in 2000. And, oh my goodness, how long ago was it? 2003. And I was named best small publisher in Australia twice. So I've actually spent the last 20 years working with real people on real businesses, largely in the real world. And when it comes to social media, this ain't our first rodeo. So a couple of things that I want you to observe here. Number one, at the time of filming this, I had 881 followers. Your first goal when using a platform like this is to get to 500 followers. That's the case if you're using Facebook and you want to start a group. It's the case if you're using LinkedIn and you want to hit the get to the get the 500 plus badge on your profile. There's this real and ever present phenomenon across just about all social media platforms. And I call it the social media valley of death. And that is because it's easy to get maybe 150 followers, maybe 200 if you push it. And then it kind of stagnates. 
And then people really struggle to hit 500. But when they hit 500, cool stuff starts to happen. So I've got to say, it took me four months to get to 500. Follow my advice and it's going to get you there. And you're going to get there a whole lot further, faster. There were so many things that I was doing that were so dumb. It took me four months to get to 500. This uh, screen grab was taken about a week ago and I've just passed 1,000. It took me four months to get to 500 and then an extra two weeks and three days to pass 1,000. Why is 1,000 important? Because when you hit 1,000, you can add a link to your bio that actually works. At this particular time, when I took this screen grab, the link did not work. The third thing that I want you to observe here is that these videos are generating 4,800, 5,400, 4,700 views. And I got to tell you, I have worked really, really hard to build a YouTube channel over several years. And I don't think I have ever had a video on YouTube go past 5,000 views ever. And I have worked so, so very hard. So when I asked you the question about time a little bit earlier, I often think that we're investing our time and our focus in the wrong places. Uh, wrong places. So there we go. Radical transparency. I'm brand new to the platform, but however, I don't want you to make the same mistakes that I have and you can accelerate things. Now this on the screen right now is something that we call the arc of effectiveness. It's not the arc of the covenant. If you look at this, your face won't melt. This is the arc of effectiveness. And it goes like this. Up the left, we have awareness. That is your awareness of a strategy or a platform. Up here, we have enthusiasm. And the funny thing is, is as your awareness goes up, there is a peak and then your enthusiasm goes down. And it looks something like this. Now, along the bottom is time. That's our time indice. It looks something like this. You ready? You're aware of something, so you're super enthusiastic. You're right into it. You dedicate a whole bunch of time and attention to it. And then what happens is the more aware of you get it, the more you see it, you see it here, you see it there, someone's doing this, someone's doing that. It suddenly becomes less and less interesting to you. Um, something called the beta Meinhof principle kicks in and strategies that you thought were original and unique, you start to see them everywhere and you start to go, well, maybe they're not as exciting and original and unique as I thought that they were. And as your awareness increases, your enthusiasm starts to, to, to drop. So there's this point where your, your awareness is at its height and then suddenly your enthusiasm begins to drop. You start off all enthusiastic, then the more familiar you get with something, the less exciting it might seem, your enthusiasm begins to drop. Now, at the same time, if we're talking about effectiveness, over time, the effectiveness of the strategy or tactic looks more something like this. That's the effectiveness. And when I talk about effectiveness, I'm not just talking about fans and followers and likes. I'm talking about outcomes like leads and meetings and client relationships. It looks something like this. And the point of intersection happens around here, just at the moment when your enthusiasm is beginning to drop. That is just when it seems to happen. But we're so focused on all the little nitty gritty of things because our awareness has reached its peak that we sometimes forget why we're doing these things in the first place. And if you're using TikTok for B2B, you are using it as a business. This point of inflection is the 500 mark. If you can get yourself to the 500 mark as followers and think about that as your first goal, something wonderful happens at that particular point. The algorithm seems to take over. It seems to start generating fans and followers for you. And all you need to do is do what you do best. And that is be an authority, be a leader. And I'm gonna give you my content rhythms in a, in a little bit, just follow the, continue to follow the formula. And you can work through that particular space and that particular gap. The other interesting thing is, is at around that same time we hit 500, you've also bettered down your craft. And what do I mean by that? I mean that you're going to make some pretty dumb videos when you start to use any particular video-based tool for the first time. <laughs> Andrew says, phew, I hate it when I look at something when my face melts. Me too. It's awful, particularly trying to get it all back together after it melts. 
So when it comes to building, here are, here are some of my strategies for you to help you get started when it comes to building. It all starts with your name, your bio, and a little game changer that I'm going to come back to. This should be really obvious, but it surprises me how it's not obvious for a lot of people. It all starts with your name, your bio, and a little bit of a game changer that I'm going to come back to. Guys and gals, we're about to play a game. Who wants to play a game? Give me a shout out. Say, I want to play a game. Or I love playing games. Or me. Because whenever I invite you to play a game, please participate. Because games reveal how you think in the real world. You're playing in the game world. It's a safe space. So you let your guard down, but it reveals how you play in the real world. Thanks, Yvonne. Thanks, Noel. Uh, awesome. Me, ready. Ready, fire, aim. Let's do this. All right. So down the left of the screen, you can see a bunch of names for a fictional business. And I've called this business Prism Athletica. <laughs> And I gave it this name because it's a stupid name. And I see lots of businesses creating stupid names for their businesses all the time. And I wish John Inglesos was on the call today, right now, because I'd be making fun of him. And that is because John Inglesos, my business partner, his first business was called Andromeda Media. I still don't know what that was about. <laughs> but anyway, I've chosen to call this Prism Athletica. Now, Prism Athletica is actually a sporting goods business. So you could call it Prism Athletica, or you could call it Bob's Sporting Goods. Which do you think is a better name? That's the first game. Prism or Bob's? Which do you think is a better name for a business? And if you're feeling really courageous, tell me why. All right, cool. Now, underneath Prism Athletica and Bob's Sporting Goods, and yes, Bob's Sporting Goods is better because it says what it says what it is. In a, in, a, in a day and age where we've all got limited attention spans, we don't want to spend a billion dollars on brand equity marketing. You can see under that that I have another thing. We love baseball. All right, so I've got Bob's Sporting Goods. We love baseball. What could we love baseball be a good name for? Then we've got Bob. I've called him Bob McGregor. And Bob is passionate about baseball. So he's called, some people call him Bob Mr. Baseball McGregor. Now, if there is a Bob McGregor on the call, or if anyone knows a Bob McGregor, apologies. I, I made up this name from my head. All right, cool. All right. If Bob wanted to use LinkedIn, what should he call his LinkedIn profile? Should he call his LinkedIn profile Prism Athletica? Should he call it Bob Sporting Goods? What should Bob call his LinkedIn profile? Who wants to have a game? Thank you, Sarah. He should call it Bob McGregor. All right. Can you see the game here? Can you see the game? We've got the name and we've got the forum. All right. Uh, if he's going to use LinkedIn, he should be called Bob McGregor. All right. This is a trick question. Where should Bob be using Prism Athletica? Should he be using that on his Facebook profile as the name of his Facebook group for LinkedIn, for YouTube, for his podcast, for Twitter, for TikTok? Where should it be using Prism Athletica? Thank you, Graham. Nowhere. It's a dumb name. I hate it. <laughs> Unless you've got like the budget of Nike, right? Forget about it. All right. Bob's Sporting Goods. Where could Bob use Bob's, Bob's Sporting Goods? Now, by the way, there are no right or wrong answers here. I just want you to be thinking about this as it applies to you and your business. So Bob's Sporting Goods, Facebook profile, Facebook group. LinkedIn, YouTube, podcast, Twitter, TikTok. You know, the only place that I think that I would use Bob's Sporting Goods would be Twitter. And the reason why is that Twitter can become a really good uh, client customer relationship management tool. So there are brands like Dell that use uh, Twitter for complaints, <laughs> basically. And it's a great place. People can like complain on Twitter because Twitter is a platform where people just rage and complain. And that's the way they do it. He might also have a LinkedIn business profile, but you know what? LinkedIn business profiles are not really particularly effective. So if we're talking about spending time and attention, I'm going to put a line through that. All right. We love baseball. We love baseball. Facebook profile, Facebook group, LinkedIn, YouTube, podcast, Twitter, TikTok. What do you think? 
Facebook group. Thank you, Danny. You're getting the idea, guys and gals. Facebook group. We love, we love baseball. Why would we love baseball be a great name for a Facebook group? Because your Facebook group should not be about you. It should be about the audience. It should be about a shared interest or a shared, pa uh, or a shared passion. That's what it should be, right? Uh, all right, we love baseball. It could be a Facebook group. You know what? It could also be a podcast. It could also be a YouTube channel. And indeed, it probably could also be a TikTok as well too. It could be almost any of these things because it's talking about the audience. I don't think it'd be great for LinkedIn and it would look weird as your Facebook profile. All right, let's jump to the bottom. Bob, Mr. Baseball McGregor. Where could Bob use Mr. Where could Bob use Mr. Baseball McGregor? I would use Mr. Bob, Bob, Mr. Baseball McGregor for my business profile because on Facebook, because more people are likely to like Bob, Mr. Baseball McGregor than Prism Athletica or indeed Bob's sporting goods. I think that they really are. Uh, Facebook group, I'm not going to call it that. LinkedIn, I'm going to stick with, uh, with the one that we've got. YouTube, maybe. The podcast, no, should be about the audience. Twitter, maybe. As I said, there are no right or wrong answers. But I do think that that would work really well for TikTok. And I also think that Bob McGregor would work really well for TikTok as well too. Bob McGregor would probably also work for Twitter, not for a podcast, maybe for a YouTube channel, not for a Facebook group. Yes, for a Facebook profile. What I'm trying to get across here is that people, when they want to engage with someone on social media, they do not want to engage with brands. They want to engage with people and they want people to answer the question, what's in it for me? They don't want to deal with faceless, nameless brands. They want to deal with human beings. Uh, Mr. Baseball McGregor, over here as well too. They don't want to deal with faceless human brands. If they're not dealing with a human being, they want to deal with something that represents their passions because you need to be always asking the question, answering the question, what's in it for me? So for me in my world, I've got one account, which is James Tuckerman, and I've got another one called Mr. B2B, and I ended up settling on Mr. B2B hyphen James Tuckerman. As I said, there are no right or wrong answers. All right, let's talk about your bio. On the screen right now, you can see the word one three times in a row, one, one, one. I'm going to share something called our marketing monetization mantra. For some people on the call today, this is going to be the most valuable thing that I provide for you right now. Are you ready? The most valuable piece. With all of your marketing, I want you to be thinking about this. One person, one problem, one product. One person, one problem, one product. This could be you want someone to opt in for your free gift. This could be you want someone to book a meeting with you. This could be you want someone to buy your product or service. This indeed could be your bio using a tool as simple as TikTok. Now, once again, today we're talking about TikTok, but I want you to be thinking about this across all your social media platforms. What you'll notice here is that on the right, I say consultant, agency, B2B. One person. You might have to squint, but that's what we got. Next, need leads, meetings, clients. One problem. And then I have a link to my product or indeed my call to action. The three Ps are super powerful and super duper important. If I was turning over less than $100,000 a year, I would be fixating on the three Ps. I would be going, who is my target audience? What is the biggest problem that they have? And what product could I offer that specific target audience? That's what I'd be focusing on. One person, one problem, one product. Anything else that doesn't feed into that 
paradigm into that particular framework is going to be a distraction. So there is a point at this moment where people might say, okay, who is my target audience? And is my target audience on TikTok? One person, one problem, one product. Because if your target audience is not on TikTok, you shouldn't be on TikTok. No matter how good it might make you feel to get the followers and the fans and the, and the video views. But however, if they are, and for most people, they now are, and it's, and, it's, and it's dramatically changing, that's the case. Then if you've got that person, you need to ask yourself, what are the challenges that they're facing? And then think about what I can do to solve those challenges. So for example, we have a program called The Recipe. Now, this particular accelerator, this mastery program, was my first really big one. It was my first one to generate more than a million dollars in sales. And I still get messages to this day, people saying that training program changed my life. That was like the best bit of training that I ever did. And it's, and it's still one of our most popular training programs and it's called The Recipe. Now, when I named it, I didn't give it a very good name. I mean, like, you know, Graham said, could it be the name from the brand name? Now, The Recipe is vague. I mean, like it's like Prism Athletica, right? It, it doesn't really mean anything. But however, I've been very successful marketing this particular training program over the years because one person, one problem, one product. I could say, are you an established B2B business owner? Do you struggle to get more from existing assets? Do you struggle to forge alliance partnerships? Do you struggle to get more from social media? Indeed, the reality might be is that you're struggling to scale. The business is all tied to you and the effort that you need to put in. One person couple different problems there, one product. All right, if you want to scale, if you want to boost your authority, get leads because leads have come before meetings, I have the recipe for that. If you're a new business or a brand new service-based business and you want to build an audience, you want to get revenue positive as quickly as possible, you want to get confidence, what you don't want to do is you don't want to launch to crickets. You can spend a lot of money on websites. You can spend a lot of money on SEO. You can spend a lot of money on all these different things. But the reality is if you have one person, one problem, one product, and a really clear funnel for that particular audience, you can start to build your audience before you even launch. So you do not launch to crickets. Can you see what I'm doing here? If you're a marketing pro, it's your job to be on top of all the trends. You need to know what systems exist so that you can implement for your clients. You need, to, you need clarity about what's working, what's not working. You want your clients to know that you're making a difference. You want visible outcomes. Are you at the top of your game? Well, guess what? Even Tiger Woods needs a coach, which is why we have the recipe. One person, and I've thrown together a handful of problems here, but struggling to scale, don't launch to crickets. Are you at the top of your game? We have the solution. So that there is a big picture marketing message. And as Debbie says, totally. It all starts with your name, your bio, and the game changer. Are you ready for the game changer? Are you ready? It's your profile. Sure. It's your profile. That's fine. Have I left enough space for myself here? I have indeed not. All right. It's your profile, but might be your profile. Ah. But you need to make it about them. This is sales and marketing 101. Everything that you do might be yours, but you need to make it about them. Constantly be answering that question, that unspoken question, what's in it for me? So all effective marketing is something called pull marketing. Pull marketing is when you position yourself as the prize and you create an environment where people are trained to come to you. When you get pushy, you scare people away. And it's why when you see social media platforms that are all pushing sales messages, pushing, pushing sales messages, you scare people away. Focus on delivering value and you'll never have a problem again. So this is Marcus. And I saw Marcus on the call the other day. Now, Marcus, oh, just before, jump on the line. Now, Marcus, I found this picture of you on social media overnight and I loved it. So I had to use it. I apologize that I didn't use it with your permission. I hope it's, I hope it's totally cool. He says, handsome devil. Um, and uh, 
and, and, and your better half is looking stunning as well too. So when Marcus came into our world, when Marcus came into our world, he was a photographer, all right? A photographer. Now, who is the target audience for a photographer? I don't know, weddings, bar mitzvahs, everything, right? So we had this challenge when it came to the target audience. Photography. There is no target audience for photography. But however, we said to Marcus, you need to get some more granularity with your target audience. And what did we settle on? It was corporate photography for sporting events. Corporate photography for sporting events. Now, if you know that your target audience is someone that looks after sporting events for sporting clubs, we're not talking about, you know, running out to the football field and Marcus taking a photo of someone and takes a giant specky or, you know, kicks the, kicks the winning goal. To use American parlance, somebody getting a touchdown, um, UK scoring for the World Cup, right? That wasn't the type of photography. The type of photography is a corporate event, a sporting club that hold corporate events. And that was a pretty wild move to go from I am something for everyone to someone that does corporate sporting events. One person, the moment that he was able to identify one person, he was able to find those people. I believe the channel Marcus for you would have been LinkedIn, but he could even pick up the phone when it's that granular uh, and you can identify their problems. One person, one problem, one product. And he was able to build a product for corporate event managers and sporting events. Awesome. Marcus says, uh, it was three years ago that I set myself the goal to do one of your programs. Uh, that year passed, and now I'm just going to get down to here. It's now been just six weeks since I started your training, and two amazing things have happened. I'm now working with clients who pay me a lot more, seven times what I was charging. Specialists always charge more. If you're not specialized, people will always haggle. And I've also secured double my usual projects because he could find the audience, he could speak the audience, he could talk their language. And I'll read the rest of the testimonial a little bit later if I get the chance. Now, what's interesting about Marcus, who says, I own that market now, then COVID hit and COVID hit. And Marcus, during COVID, there weren't that many sporting events anymore. And he pivoted again and he applied the strategies again to start selling a real estate product. Now, I'm not going to go into all the details of all your real estate product detail, Marcus, but one person, one problem, one product, one person is real estate agents. Here are the problems that they have, and then you can come up with the product. And with real estate agents, he can continue to find them on LinkedIn, but he also might be able to embrace TikTok because that audience will be on TikTok as well too. One person, one problem, one product. And Marcus just said, absolutely true story. Hey, please give Marcus a virtual round of applause. I didn't know he was going to be here today, but I'm glad he was, particularly because I was using the image and I hadn't had the chance to ask him permission. <laughs> oh. All right, woohoo, Marcus, excellent. Uh, guys and gals, it seems crazy if I said to you, you could be charging seven times what you're charging now. Seven times. Think about what it is that you're charging now and multiply that by seven. It seems crazy. But Marcus is not the only person that's come into our, come into our world and he's changed up his rates by three, by four, uh, Naomi, who I'll talk about a little bit later. She's, she's up to her rates by tons 10. And that is because a little bit earlier, I invited you to say, I am the prize. If you have target audience clarity, one person, you can identify their products. These can be high value products because value is always relative. Sorry, high value problems and then create the products to manage the problem. All right, guys and gals, we've moved through build. We are on to manage. All right, manage. This is the timepiece. And yeah, any new social media tool can be an absolute time suck. Now, Maureen is a long-term friend of mine uh, and an on and off again client, depending on what she's doing in her world. Um, and Maureen had seen me posting about TikTok on, on Facebook and she reached out over the phone and she said, James, I started a TikTok account. I had some people helping me. They had me doing the little funny little dances and this and that and all the funny stuff. It didn't feel like me. It wasn't going anywhere. So I gave up. I got stuck. She called it the TikTok Valley of Doom. 
And I said, Maureen, shoot me a little video, of which she did. And she just arrived in Bali. And uh, I think it's the second or third day in Bali. She just posted on TikTok just before she'd gone on her holiday to Bali in Indonesia. And she says, I was stuck in the TikTok Valley of Doom following everyone's advice. I wasn't getting likes or followers or any traction. I'd just given up. I had a conversation with the legendary James Tuckerman just before I left for Bali. I've posted one video and it now has over 7,000 views. Amazing. Now, the biggest piece of advice that I gave to Maureen was stop following the trends. Stop doing the little dances. Stop doing the lip syncs, all those different things. I want you to, Maureen, be true to you because you are an incredible, gifted, talented human being like pretty much everyone on this call. And you've got wisdom. It's just your job to get it out there. So if we're talking about manage, it really comes down to your rhythms. We call these consistent impact activities or CIAs, your weekly rhythms, your six-week themes. And once again, I have a game changer. So my weekly ritual is that on a Monday, I will prep a bunch of, uh, I will prep, I will, which means I will come up with some ideas. I will shoot those ideas in batches and I will save them as drafts. So people think that TikTok is this very live, sort of like live and you, you, you know, you're going through your daily life and you're filming stuff as you go. Me? No, no. On, on a Monday, I shoot five videos and I save them as a draft, which means that I can let them drop throughout the week. Log in, publish, go back to my day. My schedule of rituals is I post them either at 8 a.m. or 5 p.m. Why? Because those are times that are convenient to me where a lot of people are using TikTok. Now, this is a funny thing. After I post, I turn it off immediately, right? I'm not going to get sucked into it. I turn it off immediately. And I actually believe that that helps the algorithm show it to more people. I think that they're showing it to more people. So hoping that I'll get alerts and I want to get back in there and have a little bit of a look. Now, when I post, often people will comment. That's what this little thing is here. People will leave a comment. There's a feature within TikTok where you can reply to a comment as a video. And what I found is that if I do five, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, just about every single one of those videos is going to get a comment. And some of those comments are people very enthusiastically and passionately disagreeing with me. But I'm not going to say anything that I don't believe in. So often I will shoot a reply. Five plus five is 10, which is why I often have 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. and I end up shooting, uh, posting twice per week. Now, the reply strategy is a bit of a next level strategy, not for beginners, because it makes you feel very uncomfortable and nervous. But however, I think it's been a very powerful way to get people all fired up about what it is that, uh, that I'm talking about. Now, you can do this on your phone in less than 30 minutes a day. Me, I do it all in 90 minutes on a Monday. Now, as you might have guessed, I'm not only spending that 90 minutes doing TikTok, I'm spending that 90 minutes planning out my entire content rhythm for the week across all social media channels. Now, I highly recommend that if you haven't seen this before, take a photo of this right now. Whether you decide that TikTok is your tool of choice or not, this is a super powerful strategy. Are you ready? Monday, bust a myth. Tuesday, give a gift. Wednesday, share a story. Thursday, reveal a tactic. Friday, call to action. Now, the funny thing is that I can do this in as my email newsletter. And if you look at my emails, you'll notice that Monday, I usually bust a myth. Tuesday, I usually give a gift. Wednesday, I tell a story, usually about one of our clients. Thursday, I reveal a short tactic. And Friday, I have a call to action. Have you noticed that? I could also apply this to my Facebook group. I haven't been as uh, efficient on my Facebook group as I should. But once again, Monday, bust a myth. Tuesday, give a gift. Wednesday, share a story. Thursday, I reveal a tactic. Friday, call to action. Can you see a trend here? What about LinkedIn? Monday, bust a myth. Tuesday, give a gift. Wednesday, share a story. Thursday, reveal a tactic. Friday, call to action. Now, the crazy thing is, is that I used to do this backwards. 
I used to do my email and then I used to try and restructure my email for a Facebook group post and then try and structure it as a re LinkedIn post. And then I try and structure it, restructure it as a TikTok. Now I have a TikTok first strategy. I shoot my video and the crazy thing is the email writes itself. The content can be the, uh, the, the written word, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the transcription of my little TikTok can either go on Facebook or I can rewrite it. And the same deal again with LinkedIn. And in doing so, I'm producing five emails, five Facebook posts, five LinkedIn comments and five TikToks. And I haven't even, I haven't even begun to talk about Instagram yet and all the other channels. But the crazy thing for me is that the big revelation for me is that if I can do something in under 60 seconds in a TikTok video, I can do it everywhere. I can absolutely do it everywhere. Punch out where I bust a myth or I give a gift or I share a story or a real tactic. And I do that and bam, 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 five times I've done it. Now down the left of the screen, you can see themes. And that is because every week I will have a theme. And for me, I might start at the top of the funnel and I'll think about, you know, five things, maybe six things that I could talk about at the top of the funnel. Or I might do top of funnel, middle of funnel, bottom of funnel, top of funnel, middle of funnel, bottom of funnel, top of the funnel, middle of funnel, bottom of funnel. And I always have a theme for the week. And all I need to do is for that particular theme is I need to go, okay, what's a really common myth? What's a gift that I could give? What's a story I could share? What's a tactic I could reveal? And what is indeed a call to action? The things that get the most traction are the myths, and the reveal the tactic. However, what's your number one goal when using TikTok as a sales and marketing tool? This is your number one goal if you're using any social media platform as a business tool. I want you to tell me, I want you to type it. It's even written on the screen. What's your number one goal when using any social media platform as a social media marketing tool? That's right. Get them off social media, get them off social media, have a call to action says, Jed, get them off. That's your first goal. And it is your end goal. Now, someone said, is there a uh, Noel, is there a logic to this order? Why not give a tactic before the gift? You know what, I have switched it up. I've moved it around. But the funny thing is, is someone might enter our world over the weekend as a lot of people do. And the first message that I get is I'm usually busting a myth. So the myth might, myth might be TikTok is for teenagers, right? And then people go, oh yeah, it's not for teenagers, which means that when I present my gift, content rhythms for TikTok, people go, I want that. They don't go, why would I want that? You get me? So I might say as a myth, you don't need a website. All you need is an off-ramp, right? Now on Tuesday, I say, here is my off-ramp framework. And you go, why would I need that? Because I've got to bust the myth first. Then I'm going to give the gift, then I'm going to reinforce it with the story. The story is an opportunity for me to demonstrate my expertise, introduce myself. Thursday, I'm going to do that a little bit further. And then if they haven't responded to my gift on the Tuesday, I have some further call to action and they're like, right, I'm in. That's the way that it is going to work. So we have a weekly rhythm. And the weekly rhythm is what you can see on the screen, which is what I do in my 90 minutes on the Monday. And I have six weeks of themes. I highly recommend that you bed down your six weeks of themes, because if you can get through six weeks of themes, you're more likely than not to get through the arc of effectiveness. You're about to get out the other side without your face melting off. All right, cool. So I said that there is a weekly rhythm, six weeks of themes, and my game changer. Now, before I hit my game changer, I want to hear from you guys and gals. Out of everything that I just said there, was there anything that came out as particularly useful to you? Or are there mistakes that you've been making that you might be now more likely to avoid? What I want to do is we, as we near the one hour mark, I want you to reflect. Just take a moment to reflect and think about all the things we've been talking about so far. And maybe it was one simple message or one simple idea or one simple uh, tactic or strategy or bigger picture idea. I want you to type it out and I want you to tell me. I want you to tell me because this is gonna be useful for you. It's gonna be, uh, be useful for me because I'm gonna to get to see what's going on in your brains. It's gonna be useful for you because you're gonna be reinforcing the message and it's gonna be useful for other people, other people, 
because they might not have picked up the same message as you. And by doing that, you're going to help them out. Furthermore, I have another participation bonus. Yes, I have a participation bonus. Now, I offered this up in a webinar a couple of weeks ago. I hadn't actually prepared it. It is now done. It is now completed. The people that I promised this to a couple of weeks ago, you know who you are. You're going to get it. But if you want my nine ingredients for a self-closing offer, you better pipe up now. And if you can't think of anything that I've said which resonated, just say, yeah, woohoo, I wanted anything to get the self-closing offers for B2B participation bonus. Let's have a look uh, at some of the things that you've said. Raymond said, get them off TikTok. Thank you very much. Now, Raymond will remember that in three months' time, in six months' time, in six years' time, and it will not have changed. Yvonne says, your content rhythms matrix. I hope it was very simple. And if you want to see examples, go to my TikTok profile and you'll see me doing it again and again. Jade, a process to create six weeks of things? Yeah. I'm going to make that six-week theme building exercise a little bit easier in just a moment. Batching is the key, says Aaron, in my, is the key in my honest opinion. Absolutely. We don't want to take it, take it over your life. Uh, piped or piping up. That's what you're doing. Batching, the six-week theme says, Rowie, hey, Rowie, thanks for joining in. Rowie just unlocked uh, the participation bonus. There are still people who have not participated. No bonus for you. All right, no bonus for you. Uh, all right, let's have a look. Uh, Judd not following trends. Quite a con contrarian consideration. Andrew says the content rhythm takes him longer than 90 minutes on a Monday. Glad you're doing it. It might take two hours. It might even take four hours. But the more you do it, it'll take less and less and less. All right, Tremaine, good to see you. All right, excellent. Busting the myths. This is terrific. Also, just to see some new names. Hi, Themba. Good to see you too. Bonus for me, please, he says. All right. So if you're struggling to come up with themes or things to talk about, I believe that it's very valuable to have a methodology in your business. And that is because I see far too many B2B business owners stepping into people's worlds and saying, I have lightning. I have magic. I offer transformation solutions. I open growth solutions. Work with me and I will transform your business. And people say, but what will you do? And they say, I will come into your business and you will pay me money and I'm going to transform things. It's not reassuring at all, guys and gals. The moment that you have a methodology, you become the creator of that methodology. It becomes a signature method that becomes all about you. And the other great thing about a methodology is that you can take your clients through a methodology consistently which means that you can recruit other people to do what it is that you do. You might have magic, but you need to bottle that magic. Indeed, all magic is unbelievable until somebody puts it in a box and shows other people how to do it. So here's a little bit of a mapping framework for anyone that wants to pull together a methodology. Are you ready? You can do this in your own way. Draw three circles on a piece of paper. As I said, for some people, this is going to be a game changer. Then all you need to do is write down the three biggest headaches that your target audience have. Remember, one person, one problem, one product. Remember I said that before? So I might turn around and I say, uh, visibility. I'm feeling invisible. That's a headache, right? Okay, I might say, uh, not enough time. I never have enough time, right? That's another headache. Sad face, sad face. Uh, I'm not getting enough uh, leads. There's not enough opportunities coming into my world. Sad face. You can do this on your own, in your own way. Then the next thing that you do is you go, okay, well, if I needed to fix each one of these three things, what within my realm of knowledge is going to help me with that? So I might look at that and I go, well, I might be able to amplify you, amplification strategies, right? That's a big one. Now, I'm going to change this one on the right to leads and clients, or at least not enough of them, right? Then I might look at that and I go, well, the amplification is an issue, but you know what? what's probably a bigger issue? Not having a clear offer framework. 
trying to do something for everyone, uh, being a jack of all trades. And we all know that jack is a fool and specialists charge more. And then they might say time and I'll turn around and well, you're going to need some sort of uh, systems to scale, maybe some sort of automation set. I can look at the three big headaches and immediately I go, okay, well, the, uh, these are three things that I would ask someone to focus on if they were struggling with any of this stuff. Automation scale strategies, amplification strategies to boost visibility, uh, refinement of your offer as a way to generate more leads, book more meetings, sign more clients. Can you see what I'm doing here? Then what I would do is I'd look at amplification. I'd go, what are the three things that somebody needs to get right? Or the offer bit. One, two, three. One, two, three. Then I would look at the bigger picture goal, the bigger desire, the massive thing that my clients might be looking for. And I go, you know what? If they're getting leads and they're getting visibility and they're getting time, they become the prize. And next time somebody steps into my world, I don't say, yeah, I can help you. I can help you do any, anything and everything because I'm amazing, right? I can say, well, based on what you've said, it sounds like you've got three major challenges. And if we're going to tackle those three major challenges, we need a strategy for each of those challenges. Indeed, I have a methodology to tackle each of those challenges to take you from obscure to the obvious choice, from a ghost town business to someone who is always in demand, from someone who has no time to someone who can scale their businesses and go on holiday whenever they want. So when we're talking about your content, get yourself a weekly rhythm. That helps if you have six-week themes. What should you put in your six-week themes? It helps if you have a methodology. Magic is unbelievable until you bottle it. You've got to take your lightning and bottle your lightning. Like Naomi did here, I mentioned her before. Naomi not only increased her rates, she increased her rates tenfold. Uh, we took this testimonial uh, a couple steps before that, but she says, I went through the process you teach. I restructured my offer. Not only did I close the next two sales calls with new clients without an ounce of sales pressure, I made a record sale for my business. I doubled my, my rates. It was my biggest client spend ever. I think she's doubled her rates twice since then, which has allowed her to times 10 her normal rates, which naturally is a good seg into monetize. So guys and gals, you jumped on this call because you wanted to learn a little bit about TikTok. And I really hope that as I've been talking through TikTok, I've been delivering more than just TikTok. I really hope that I've been talking about ways to help you in your business above and beyond this funny little platform called TikTok or even social media as a whole. And the reason why is that social media guys and gals, is a means to an end. It's a means to an end. All right, let's start with monetize. Before I hit monetize, guys and gals, are you having fun? <laughs> are you having fun? I know that sometimes I'm presenting information that's making you, that might make you, I don't know, your butt clench a little bit, right? But are you having fun? Are you having fun? Am I delivering value? Uh, Neil says you deliver as always. Yes, yes. Thumbs up. Great. Great to hear from you. Excellent. Because this is the pointy end, yeah? Right? We've talked about building an audience and it's really about them. It's not about you. If you want to create content, it's great if you can pull together some sort of methodology and then just roll that out. Roll it out and you'll never run out of content. I swear you'll never run out of content. You'll start at the top of your methodology. You look at it and you go, this week I'm doing this thing. Next week, I'm going to do that theme. And then by the time you've worked through, let's have a look at this. By the time that you've worked through, let me choose another color. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You're probably three months in and you can start again. Monetize. All right, monetize, it all starts with your, see if you can guess, it's a two word, it's a two word phrase. I've used it a couple of times so far. It all starts with your, See if you can guess. All right, I got this uh, email from a woman called Kirsty uh, not so many days ago, seven or eight days ago. 
Hello, hello. I just wanted to jump in and say thank you for the email you sent on Wednesday. I read it and it prompted me to jump back into my TikTok account. I hadn't posted a video in almost a year on TikTok. Anyway, I posted a video on Wednesday afternoon and boom, it went viral overnight. Currently at 1.4 million views and, and over 70K likes. By the time I took this screen grab, it was already up at 165. But the best part is, guys and girls, this is where I want you to turn your ears on. The best part is I put my funnel link in my bio and now new leads are flowing into my webinar funnel. So thank you. Your email gave me the spark that I needed. Best part is I put my funnel link in my bio and now my leads are flowing into my webinar. The most important thing that you will need is it starts with your off-ramp. It starts with your off-ramp. Build the followers, build the fans, build the connections, but your goal is to get your customers and clients, your future customers and clients off social media and onto your website as a bare minimum. I would prefer if you got them onto your landing page or onto a lead capture gateway so that you can collect the lead, pre-qualify the lead, build anticipation, book a meeting, do all those wonderful things. Now, TikTok has made it a little bit tricky. You need to have a thousand, you need to have a thousand followers before they allow you to put a link that actually is dynamic that you can click. For me, I just put a I just put a link in my bio. And I had two, two little fingers that looked like that. Indeed, I had the image of it a little bit earlier. There it is. All right. You can see that I just drew, I just wrote the words b2b-.io forward slash TikTok and had little fingers going like that. And I started to collect leads almost immediately. I also want to remind you of the themes. Monday, bust a myth. Tuesday, give a gift. So Tuesday, I would say, who wants my awesome thing? Give me a yes or a hell's yes in the comments. And people began to leave comments for me. And I could say, here's a link. And now I simply say, go to the link in my bio. So it all starts with an off-ramp. What is your off-ramp? This is a universal evergreen off-ramp. This is something that we've been teaching for five, seven, eight years now. It is our recipe roadmap. And it's always the same. Someone comes into our world. Maybe it's on social media. Maybe they visit our website. Maybe we've done a strategic marketing alliance or partnership. Whatever it's going to be. We don't push ourselves onto someone. We pull them into our world with a gift. We say, hey, would you like this awesome thing? They say, yeah. We say, go to my lead capture gateway here. They opt in to get that thing. And what we then do is we redirect them to a mini diagnostic. And that is because if we're going to spend time having a conversation with someone, we want to make sure that they are the right fit. If they are the right fit, we give them the opportunity to book a call. UOT stands for Ultimate Online Transaction. It's the final step in a journey online. And the best type of UOT, if you're uh, in the B2B space, is an appointment with purpose. That's when somebody books a strategy call with you. Now, of course, if somebody is just an opted in to get your free thing, you've got to deliver on that promise. Send an email. Here's the thing I promised you. We also highly recommend that you introduce you and your story. We call that the welcome email, followed by the offer. These are the three most important emails that you will ever send. The promise, the welcome, the offer. They demonstrate that you are reliable, commercial, and the one in the middle is going to make you so much more memorable. And of course, it's really useful to have an email sequence if they have not booked a meeting because you get multiple bites of the cherry. So according to the psychologists of the world, it takes seven points of contact for someone to really trust you and believe you, right? And really want to work with you. Now imagine this for a second. You post something on a platform like TikTok or LinkedIn or something like that, or Facebook. They go, yeah, that sounds interesting and I want it. They go to the landing page and they give you a little bit of detail, maybe first name, last name, email address, maybe answer some questions. You redirect them to a diagnostic. 
that helps diagnose a problem for them. It's not a survey. Surveys take, take, take. The diagnostic gives. And we found that diagnostics can also be used to increase their desire to engage with you because a diagnostic indirectly highlights challenges that they might be facing. And then if they qualify, invite them to book a meeting with you. Three emails, one, two, three. How many steps is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven touches before you've even begun to engage. Now, there's a lot of training out there on sell by chat. We indeed even have training on sell by chat. And sell by chat is a great way to open doors, start conversations, bring people into your world. And you can do sell by chat on TikTok, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, or whatever. But it's so much easier rather than trying to sell by chat if you can just say, hey, here's a free gift and then let the funnel do its work for you. So guys and gals, on the screen right now, you can see a really super simple case study. This was pulled together by a guy called John Weikard. And John Weikard applied this particular off-ramp strategy using a tool called LinkedIn. Now he said, I got 73 leads, 12 meetings booked, two sales of my core product, and I have two more decisions pending. I did that in two weeks. Now, we circulated an SMS sometime in the last 24, 48 hours. I can't quite remember. Basically saying on the webinar, we're going to reveal how John Wycard got 73 leads, 12 meetings books, two sales of my core product, and I have two more decisions pending. I did that in two weeks. Now, of course, you may have seen that and immediately gone, okay, how did he do that on TikTok? He didn't do it on TikTok. He did it via LinkedIn. But the lessons that I'm sharing today are so much bigger than TikTok. The power of having an off-ramp is the difference between you being pushy-pushy and you pulling people into your world. So here's what he did. He created a gift using a lead capture gateway, using a tool called b2b-.io. And when he engaged with someone, he said, here's the gift. Register to get it. Now, when someone opted in to get his gift, he had another little online form, which pre-qualified. And then he pointed people to an appointment with purpose booking page. Now, the most important thing about this is not the technology. The most important piece about this is that John, when he came into our world, did not have target audience clarity. He had a vague idea about, about what he could do for clients and as a serial entrepreneur that had uh, built a couple of startups of his own, he knew all the things to do, the mistakes to avoid. But he went out there with the, the vague as hell website. You've never seen anything more confusing. I don't know how much he invested in that website, but a vague website, very confusing, no target audience clarity on that particular page, all talking about all these random things that he could do. He came into our world and we said, but John, one person, one problem, one product. Who would be your target audience? And he said, startup product managers. Now, the moment that he was able to say startup product managers, clarity came. The five steps to stop your product sabotaging your startup. And that became his gift. When someone opted in his gift, he had a little bit of a mini diagnostic. And then he invited people to book a power-up strategy call where you could run through with him the top five causes of self-sabotage. Very different to, hey, let's catch up and explore ways that I might be able to take your money. Yeah, very different. So he applied some of our LinkedIn strategies and he got 73 leads via LinkedIn. And I know a lot of people have a lot of trouble getting leads off LinkedIn. He got 73 leads, 12 meetings booked because they knew why they wanted to book the meeting two sales of his core product and he had two more decisions pending. Now he did say, I did that in two weeks. He didn't do it in two weeks. He did it more like in six to eight weeks because it took him six weeks to get clarity around his target audience, get the building blocks in place, assemble it all together and then launch it applying some of our social media strategies. And then he did that in two, and he did that in two weeks. What's really is incredible is he started to get leads within about 24 to 48 hours. John, uh, Peter, did John use LinkedIn ads or generic posts and articles? He applied our LinkedIn hand raise post strategy where he was reaching out to first degree connections. Uh, and Peter, if you look in our LinkedIn training, it's in part three. I can send you a link to that. 
but he did that in combination with some other things as well too. Rock and roll. All right. Guys and gals, it's the home straight. Well, no, it's one hour. Uh, no, it's not. It's home straight. You've got 45 minutes. Uh, all right. Here, I've talked about things that you need to do. I've talked about things that you need to do. Build, manage, and monetize. But first, I want to talk about things that you should perhaps not do. All right. So I want to talk about the ways that you might mess up. I want to talk about the ways that you might mess up. Now, as I was talking about, uh, as I was talking about all those particular strategies, and you'll notice that I started off with the three P's. Yeah, one person, one problem, one product. Then I introduced an idea about having your own methodology, which is your own framework that you can teach. Then I talked about an off ramp. And I also offered you this self-closing offers for B2B. As we get deeper into this, as we get more layered, what you'll notice as I'm delivering strategies that I believe are so much bigger than the topic that we have. Now, here is a funny little thing that you might not yet have realized, but within your business, you are likely to have four offers, four offers. So once again, I've got a participation bonus on the screen right now. If you have not participated and you want this, I want you to be aware of this. You have four different offers in your business. Are you ready? You have an offer that you use to get the lead. And that offer is a gift. You also have an offer to get the meeting. We call our meetings appointments with purpose. And that is because most people have vague, you know, hey, let's catch up and explore ways that I can take your money. Or they have a discovery session. And no one wants to be discovered, <laughs> right? They have a breakthrough call. No one wants to be broken down and torn apart, right? But an appointment with purpose is when you say, would you like to book a, um, I think, uh, what was, uh, what was uh, John Weichard's? A power up self sabotage call. In our world, we have a B2B offer mapping call or a B2B funnel mapping call. We have all those different things. Then you have your third offer. And your third offer is that we've something that we've recently started calling the high no brainer. Now, the high no brainer is not everything that you can do, it's often a scaled back of all the different things that you can do but it's something where you can offer a defined, reasonably measurable outcome that ticks a box, delivers a fist pumping moment, but you're not turning around and saying, sign up for $30,000. You might be saying, sign up for $3,000 because it's 16 times easier to sign an existing client or re-sign an existing client or sell something to an existing client than it is to sell something to a new client. We call it the high no-brainer. And at this point in time, most people can sell something anywhere between $1,600 to about $3,000 as a high no-brainer, and people will say, yeah, let's do it. Then the final offer that you make is your continuity. And your continuity product is your recurring revenue product, such as a retainer, or maybe it's a subscription model, or maybe it's just a long project where people are paying you monthly. But here's the thing. If you go into any forms of sales and marketing and you start with a continuity and you start offering that to strangers, people are just going to run away. Which is why each of these work particularly well at different stages. Offer a gift to a stranger. Offer an AWP to a suspect. Offer the, offer the HMB to a prospect. And then don't offer your continuity until somebody becomes a client. So for the second or third time and last time, if you have not participated yet, please do participate. Because if you do participate, you'll get the nine ingredients of a self-closing offer. And if you get the nine ingredients for a self-closing offer, I deeply hope that you'll be able 
to embrace any form of social media tool. And rather than trying to convince strangers to sign up for your continuity product, you will start with a gift as your off-ramp, then introduce people to the opportunity to have a meeting with you. At that meeting, you can introduce your high no-brainer. And then when someone signs up for your high no-brainer, you can introduce other ways that someone can work with you over the longer term. No, well, so the high no-brainer is a first win for the prospect. Yeah, I see people, they, Noel said, is the high brainer a first win for the prospect? I see people go into other people's worlds and they say, I can help you do this amazing thing. And the person's like, dude, how, how can you do that? I mean, like, I'm not even visible right now. Or, you know, I'm not getting enough leads right now. Or I just, I just don't even have enough time right now. And if you can identify within all the things that you do, something which is a measurable, quantifiable, fist-pumping moment, offer it at a price that's a high no-brainer, and you say, let's just focus on that. There's usually a time limit associated with a high no-brainer. For the next 10 weeks or the next 90 days, we're just going to focus on that. Get them that first win. Cool things happen. All right. Here is why and how you mess up. As I said, I wanted to talk about all the different things that you needed to do. Let's talk about the things that you don't need to do. All right, the interwebs are a very, very busy, busy place. People come into our world all the time and they say, James, I can't enter your world. I can't sign up for your training or technology or whatever it is because I've got to pull together a website. Guys and gals, a website is something that you can do later. You know, until, you turn over, until you're consistently turning over like 100 grand a year, you probably don't need a website. You just need a high converting op ramp and an engine to drive the leads, whether it be LinkedIn or Facebook or TikTok or something else. They say, oh, I need to get a website because I need to be able to pull together a blog because if I don't pull together a blog, I'm not gonna have authority. And then suddenly they're talking about SEO. And then suddenly they're saying, you know what? Maybe I should write a book, <laughs> right? And then suddenly they're saying, I should start a Facebook group. You know what I should do? I should get onto TikTok. <laughs> I can go on and on and on and on, right? You know what? I'm going to start a podcast. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to hire a sales professional. Then I don't have to do the selling. I'm going to abdicate responsibility to somebody else. I go into my Facebook feed any given day. Thousand things. Oh, I need a slow. I need a self-liquidating offer. All right. You know what I need to do? I need to do webinars. I need to do webinars. There are so many things that are all a means to an end. The problem with sales and marketing generally is that it's not linear. It's not linear. And there are so many more options. However, what if... I could give you a structure that was just that little bit more linear. In our world, with a program like The Recipe, the first thing that we want you to focus on is your audience. Most people think that they've got a target audience and we say, who is it? And they say, business owners. And we say, does that include the local fish and chip shop? Oh no, not them. What about the local locksmith? Oh, not them. Uh, okay, business owners. Uh, what about the, the, the freight and ferry company? Oh no, not them either. You said your target audience was business owners. We have a game that we like to play called the doctor on the plane test. I would like you to be thinking about business owners. If you can think about business owners, you can think about the angles that are going to make them sit up and pay attention. For example, we talked about the biggest headaches that they have. One person, one problem, one product. If you don't have target audience clarity, you can't think about it. You can't come up with the ideas. And I know people that are constantly writing articles on LinkedIn. I need to write more articles on LinkedIn. And I'm constantly producing articles on LinkedIn. I would prefer you had one golden evergreen beacon lead magnet that speaks to their headaches, their obstacles, their aspirations and desires. And they see it and they go, I want it. Do the blog articles, do the LinkedIn later, because once you have target audience and you then have clarity, you can then leverage that content. And today I've been talking about an example about how to leverage content using TikTok as the launch ramp. But could, once again, it could be any particular platform, right? Um, 
That's how we create content. Now, if we're going to create content, then we need to find ways to be able to collect the data. We need to capture the data in ways that are also going to educate. So we need some sort of way to capture the lead. That means some sort of like opt-in page or landing page. And then we need some way to educate. And educate can be a great way to educate is usually through an email sequence. And I talked about the three most important emails that you'll ever send. It is also, I believe, absolutely essential that you qualify your leads. Very hard to qualify your leads if you don't have target audience clarity. Because one bad client is going to offset the value of five good clients. They're a huge distraction. They're constantly asking you questions. They're second guessing you, right? You don't want that. You want people that are qualified. They're the right fit. Then when they are qualified, you can start to think about this big word called amplify. I've got LinkedIn, I've got reactivation, SMAPs, strategic marketing alliances and partnerships. And that is because most people in the B2B space should be thinking about LinkedIn, reactivation and strategic marketing alliances and partnerships. What's reactivation? It's unlocking the databases that are already under your nose. That there is a process. That there is a formula. That there is a system because systems equal sanity. So I would like to spend a couple of minutes introducing you to the recipe. And the reason why is that there is a lot of people on this call, not necessarily because you're excited about TikTok, you're excited about the potential of something like TikTok. You're excited about the idea of ways that you might be able to have to boost your own authority and generate leads. Because those two things, hand in glove, authority plus lead generation is a powerful, powerful thing. And indeed, that is one of the reasons why we created the recipe so many moons ago. Now, like all our train pro training programs, there is a system, a structure. You follow it. Systems equal sanity. We call it task attainment. And that is because all you need to do is tick off a task. Even today, as I ran through this, I had you ticking boxes, completing tasks. And that is because there's a lot of people out there that say, come into my training and I'm going to download my wisdom. It's not enough. That's not how outcomes happen. Outcomes happen when you take action, which is why we have these little things called RFA challenges. Ready, fire, aim, not ready, aim, fire. Take action, build a little bit of momentum, and momentum creates momentum. All you need to do is tick the boxes. I had this screen on the, I had this on the screen before. Who is this for? Now, if you're an established business, you know that the most important thing in your world is time. And time is a funny thing, it's compounding. Uh, the more time that you have, the more time that you can invest in your business to free up time. And the more systems that you have in your business, the more time that you have and you can scale. The biggest challenge for the startups that I see is that they launch to crickets. Uh, they don't have clarity around the target audience. So they end up investing in a website, all these other things. Then they launch and crickets. And I tell you, I've been there. It's awful. One of the most awful feelings. Put in all this effort, all this time at launch, and then you get, and then you get crickets. My recommendation for you would be to build your audience before you launch. If you can build an audience, you can even start testing ideas and get revenue positive before you launch. You can get confidence because you get runs on the board. And you don't launch to crickets. When you do get around to building your website, you have complete target audience clarity, which means that your target audience is about them and not you. It's your, it's your website, but make it about them. And it is weird when I talk to the marketing pros because they're kind of like, you know what? I should know this stuff. Why should I be going to someone else and investing in their, their stuff because I'm an expert or I'm a coach or I'm a consultant? I think I said it before. The best in the best of, in the world always have a coach. Serena Williams has a coach. Tiger Woods has a coach. So we created the recipe many, many moons ago for three particular reasons. One, we found that a lot of B2B business owners were stuck on the outbound treadmill. They were chasing, chasing, chasing and feeling kind of invisible. Now, guys and girls, wild idea, wild idea. Let's create a reason for future clients to voluntarily enter your world. Is that a good thing? Does that idea make sense to you? 
Let's create a reason for future clients to voluntarily enter your world rather than chase, chase, chase. Number two, B2B business owners in particular spend way too much time convincing rather than helping, which destroys their self-esteem. Start by helping people before they have paid you money, maybe before you have even met, which is one of the reasons why I love social media. It's one of the reasons why I'm getting into TikTok. It's one of the reasons that I'm a huge fan of LinkedIn. It's one of the reasons why we have a Facebook group. But once again, very hard to help people. Well, it's not hard to help people. It's good to help people, but it's much, easier, it's much better to help people and then have a way to get them off. Third, it's a bit awkward. Your attempts at lead generation stink because they're all about you and not about the headaches of the client. Can we re-engineer? Can we reverse engineer your offer? Remember how I talked about most businesses have four offers? Let's come up with an offer that tackles the headache first. What are the headaches that they have before they know they need you? Let's give them a gift. Then if they're suspicious, let's give them a meeting where we can help them get a little bit more clarity. Take them from A to B. Then let's introduce your high no-brainer. Get them to a point of first win, as Noel said. Then we can introduce all the ways that we can make their lives beautiful and magic, which if we said that to a stranger, they would tell you to take a hike. So guys and girls, I often talk about little game changes. This is one here. You might want to take a photo or write this down on a piece of paper. What are the headaches of your future clients before they know they need you? What are the headaches of future clients before they know they need you? Answer that question and watch a bunch of cool things happen. So as I said, we have this wonderful thing called our recipe program and it's an accelerator and it's developed to deliver a couple different outcomes. Let's create a reason to get future clients to voluntarily enter your world. Let's start helping people so that we can boost your authority. Let's identify their headaches so that we can take them on a journey following a process or a formula and not just that, Let's have a whole lot of fun. Woo! Let's have a whole lot of fun. I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, like, we get it, we got into our businesses in the first place because we wanted to be the captains of our own ship. We wanted autonomy. We wanted to be able to go on holidays whenever we wanted. You know, we wanted to be able to take long weekends and have days off. Now, for a lot of B2B business owners, that's not been the case, has it? because we get so bogged down. And then of course, everything changes and it shifts and it changes and it shifts. What I wanna tell you guys and gals might be shocking, might be shocking. But when I use the word fun, I am also talking about fundamentals. Have you noticed this today? Everything that I've been talking about has been about the fundamentals. And it doesn't matter whether TikTok is amazingly popular for six months than goes the way of MySpace. If you have the fundamentals, you can pack your bags and you can move on to the next thing. It doesn't matter if you look at TikTok and you go, that's not right for me, but I am going to apply those strategies on LinkedIn. It does not matter. Fun and fundamentals should go hand in glove. Guys and gals, I think I asked this question before, but I want to hear from you. Are you having fun? Are you having fun? Because what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to run through some of the outcomes that the recipe program was designed to deliver. There are people on this call that have signed up for the recipe. They are part of the recipe. There are other people that have signed up for other training programs of us in the past. There are people who are brand new to our world. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce our accelerator and it is indeed a product, which means that this is indeed a pitch. So now you have a choice. You have a choice. You can go make a cup of tea while I spend the next 10, 15 minutes doing this and then come back after I've done. But here's something that I want you to be aware of. And the people that are part of our world already know this. The most successful people in the world love a good pitch. And that's because the people who are already part of our world are probably going to be dissecting everything that I do over the next 10 minutes. Because what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be following a formula called outcomes, things, and feelings. Are you ready? There are a bunch of outcomes that the recipe was designed to deliver. 